Hello, hello, hello. Good evening to you and uh, welcome to tonight's webcast on Majestic Christian TV Network. My name is Apostle Larry and uh, it's my joy to be, to be coming your way with the word of the living God. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this singular privilege. We ask that tonight you will speak to us, you will minister to us, you will bless us at the utterance of your word. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being a part of this. Grant that the declaration of your word shall bring life, communicate health and strength and power to my hearers. Touch my lips and my spirit that I shall speak and release only that which you have destined for us to hear. I give you praise tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to just continue where I began to share uh, a few days back on uh, how to experience newness. And like you know, uh, we're in the month of August, and uh, I just want to kind of blend a bit what really, you know, has been on my heart to share with you. But also importantly to mention the fact that, uh, you know, we're in a season wherein, you know, we talk about newness and th new things begin, the number eight being the number of new things or newness, new beginnings, hallelujah. Um, but like I began to share uh, from Isaiah chapter 43, the Bible says that God was telling his people through the mouth of the prophet Isaiah that they should forget the former things and that they should look forward to new things. And even so, I want to let you know that God wants you to, to look ahead and to expect bigger and better things, Amen. When, when, when you hear preachers talk about it, sometimes people think it's just an exaggeration or they're just trying to hype people. No. God is a God of new things. Amen? God believes in us having new, 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 newness in our lives, new things, a new cycle, a new, you know, freshness all the time. He said, behold, I do something new. Forget about what is gone. I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? So, and I, I recall, I mentioned the fact that in life, we go through phases. If you take, uh, let's say, let's take, for example, a simple uh, creature like a, uh, a butterfly. A butterfly, we goes through various stages. You call it metamorphosis. That means it, it, the eggs are laid and becomes a, a lava, a maggot, then becomes a cocoon, then after some time becomes a butterfly. You know, all these are different stages in the life of the same little insect of butterfly. The same, I believe, applies to us human beings. Every stage in our lives speak, speaks of a stage wherein God closes one chapter and allows a new one to begin. And that's why I want to empower you to, to be ready when sometimes God wants to usher you into something new. When God decides to, uh, you know, open a new door for you to enter. But the fact is that sometimes we are, we are pretty much attached to what we, have, what we know and what we have done, what we become accustomed to, that it's difficult for us to release that and to move further. But I want you to know that as long as you are a child of God and as long as you are working with God, you will never miss your way. The thing is this. Many times when we are going ahead, when we are going forward, you miss situations which are so difficult and so complex that it becomes scary and intimidating enough. The fact of the matter is that when you are about to move into something new, you will see before you certain things which are so confronting that you, you, you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel uh, courageous enough. To go further. In fact, even times when you have maybe taken some chances and you have done some great things and you have failed, you feel as though uh, that couldn't have been the will of God for you. But sometimes God will bring us through some of those situations in order to usher us into the newness. Amen? And so this is what you got to know. In fact, Jesus Christ our Lord himself has to pass through a certain difficult phase of his life in order to enter into glory. He had to be what? Humiliated, crucified, beaten, spat upon, nailed to the cross, and brutalized. And then he entered into his glory. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes to, sometimes to transition from the now into the new, sometimes it can be 
quite a challenge. But you, you have to realize that when God is with you, you will not be destroyed. He said, when you go through the flood and go through the waters, it shall not what, overwhelm you. The fire will not consume you. God said so. He said, I'll be with you. Amen. And so God is just preparing you, preparing me, preparing whoever is watching to usher you from where you are to your new place. Hallelujah. But I, and I share the scripture with us, which says, uh, in fact, Isaiah chapter 43, the verse 90 says, it says, uh, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Even now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Now, to perceive something is to be able to, be able to sense it, is to be able to, uh, um, you know, pick it up when it's coming. And then I related it to John chapter 3, verse 3, when um, Nicodemus went to meet Jesus and to tell Jesus when he met him secretly at night. He said, well, uh, uh, Rabbi, I know that nobody can do the things you're doing unless God is with him. And then Jesus replied and said, well, I tell you the truth, nobody can enter into the kingdom of God. Nobody can see the kingdom of God unless that person is born again. You see, so here, Jesus was telling Nicodemus, it says, unless you are renewed as a person, unless you get a new personality, it says you are Nicodemus, right? He said, yes. He said, unless you become born again, you cannot enter. In other words, unless you take on that transformation, that newness, you cannot see the new things that God has in store for you. You will only remain in the old state. You will only be seeing old things. But you're being born again. You're receiving a spiritual nature. Will not give you the equipment to perceive new things. And so we can conclude from this that when God is about to usher us into a new thing, sometimes our perception needs to change. The way we perceive things has to change. The way we feel about things has to change. Amen? The way we interpret the things around us has to change. That is the only way that we can, we can, we can perceive what God has to store for us. Now, this makes me want to actually get ahead of myself. And, and I want this one reference I need to share with you is in... Uh, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, the verses 1 to 2, it talks about, um, is that be not conform, uh, uh, um, is that be, do, not, do not conform, be not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, okay? I'm just kind of paraphrasing that. The verse 2 especially talks about not being conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? Be transformed by the renewing, by the renewing of your mind. Now, it is so important to realize that God Himself is saying that it is only when we have have had a renewal of our mind, our thinking process, that is when we'll be able to taste or test the good, perfect, and the pleasing will of God. Are you hearing me? Unless something in our thinking, habit, pattern, lifestyle changes, changes, unless the way we perceive and look at things changes, even we can miss God. And that is why when you look at when Jesus came into the world, in fact, it was clear that people did not know him. They did not recognize him. In John chapter 1, it talks about he came unto his own, but his own did not what, recognize him, so they did not receive him. But as many as received him, he gave them power. And that's another you know, topic altogether, another message altogether. But the point I wanted to realize is that it is possible to miss what God has sent to you. Just like the Jews in the time of Jesus missed him big time, most of them. Why? Because their thinking and their way of looking at uh, service to God and the worship of God was fixed and regimented in a particular way that they had no room for looking at things in a new way. Now, let me challenge you. What is it that you are facing today? What has happened to you? What are the obstacles you have faced? What are the challenges you have faced? And you are saying, well, God, you have left me in the same position for a long time. You say, God, you have forgotten me and God, nothing is happening. But as a matter of fact, 
God is trying to open your eyes to see something new. But how can you see the new thing God is doing in your life? It is only when you reprocess and you, you reevaluate yourself, your circumstances, and the things that you are dealing with. Then you can begin to see that which is the good, pleasing, and acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Are you hearing me? We're talking about how to experience newness. Because if we don't look at, if we don't change the way we are perceiving things, then what's going to happen is that you will become disappointed, you become embittered, you become angry with God, you feel that God has forsaken and abandoned you. Hallelujah. We all are confronted by trials and temptations, difficulties and all kinds of things. We are confronted. We all face these things. But at the same time, we have to realize that the same God who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, does keep his word. He never goes back on his word. So if God is with us, what is happening to us? Why come and how come? And why are we like we are forsaken and God is not with us and nothing is happening? Why is it that, why is it like God is so silent and God is not hearing our prayers? Could it be that we are not perceiving what God is doing? Could it be that we are not perceiving because we are still interpreting uh, the circumstances in the old-fashioned way? In a mindset and with a, with a lens, the spiritual lens, which God has told us to discard. Hallelujah. It says, Behold, I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Do you not even see it that I am doing something new in your life? Many times, great men and great women are born, as they say, in the furnace of affliction. In the furnace of affliction, that is the place where God shapes something new, something fresh, something powerful, something totally different, out of us. Hallelujah. And so when you find yourself in a situation whereby you are pretty much stuck and nothing is moving and, and you are being held back and, and you seems like you're not even hearing the voice of God, know that God is beginning to birth something new for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is beginning to birth something new in your life. And for that, you need to reevaluate your processing of the things that you are looking at, the things you are handling, the things you are experiencing, the things you are going through. You need to reevaluate them and look at them from God's perspective. Hallelujah. Now, there's a scripture here I would like to share with you, and that's uh, in Luke, in, in Matthew, I beg your pardon, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, uh, I'm interested in, uh, Matthew chapter 9, I'm interested in one, well, two verses, but first of all, I think I would like to, uh, okay. Now, I'm taking it from the verse 14, verse 14 of Matthew chapter 9. It says, Then the disciples of Jesus came and asked him, How is it? How is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom, the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. Then verse 16 is what I want you to take notice of. It says, No one seals a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out and the wine skin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved. Now, if you 
look at this scripture. What Jesus is simply trying to say is that new things must conform with new ways. New things, new blessings must conform with new attitudes. Hallelujah. And so if you succeed in renewing your mind, or, or let me use maybe more familiar words, if you succeed in changing the way you look at things, the way you, you analyze situations in your own life, not out of bitterness and sorrow and, and downcastedness, if I may use that word for this moment, like you, you, you look at things from a very negative point of view. I'm talking about a believer, a Christian, who has become so demoralized that everything is so bad and negative before him or her. If you change your way of looking at things in your life, then the Bible says God will now be, once you have renewed yourself in that perspective, now God will now begin to pour in new wine, new ideas, and you can begin to see clearly what God is truly doing even in the situation you find yourself. And that is a challenge I believe God uh, is giving to us. Or shall I say challenge? I, I, let me say, you know, the, the lesson, the lesson that the Lord is teaching us. Hallelujah. So you are moving from an old situation to a new situation. Then expect some changes also in your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Some of you have lived in a particular place for 10, 20, 15 years, a particular home. You've not changed nothing in your home. Everything is the same, the same furniture, the same, um, um, the same whatever. And then you expect new things to happen to you. You expect to have new friends. You expect to have uh, uh, new blessings. No, 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 no. If you want to go forward, then change your mind, change your perception. You know, decide that I'm going to change this and that in my life, this and that in my home, this and that in my family. Because I'm expecting new blessings. I'm expecting new things in my life. And so, by changing your mind, you are not preparing yourself to move into that new realm that you have envisaged. Praise the Lord. So, to experience newness, you must first of all be born again. In other words, have a change of your personality. If you want to say it in everyday terms or non-spiritual terms, then change your personality. Hallelujah. And then uh, uh, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for that new change. And that's what Jesus talks about. Putting uh, new wine into new wine skin. The container of that victory, of that miracle, of that expectation must be you and the plans you have made. Make your plans and, and make sure that you are ready for where you want God to take you. Hallelujah. If you are not ready for where you want God to take you, that thing may come and destroy you. And that's what it means by putting new wine in an old wine skin. Have you seen people who have been blessed when they are not prepared for the blessing? The blessing what? Ends up destroying them. Because it came abruptly. It came unannounced. It came unprepared. And they said, oh, look where I am today. They begin to misuse and abuse the blessing. And before you know, they themselves get destroyed. But when you are ready for it, when you have decided, when you have conditioned yourself to receive that miracle, that victory, that hope, and that newness which you have been dreaming about, you will notice it, you recognize it, and you cherish it, and you will value it, and you will guard it, and it will not destroy you. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I trust that I have encouraged you. I trust that I have inspired you. I trust that I've helped you to shift your way of looking at things. I trust that this has come to lift you up and to give you hope. Receive that right now in Jesus' name. Receive that empowerment right now. Who tells you that it's not possible for you to enter new things? Who tells you that you are down and you are down forever? Who tells you that God cannot reach down to you and lift you up? Did not God say that he likes to, he likes to lift up the downtrodden? That means you, right where you are, you are a candidate for God's upliftment. Hallelujah. But now, you yourself, are you ready to go up? Are you ready to be, to be lifted up? If you're ready, 
then desired. Look at Joseph in the in the prison. He always was looking for somebody to 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 talk about his situation. Amen. He was eagerly anticipating, and so when he had a chance to interpret the dream for the for the butler, he told him, "Make sure you mention me." But the guy forgot him. That means he wasn't contented with where he what with where he was, and he was believing that a chance would come for him to get up. Are you looking for a chance to get out of where you are? Then this is your opportunity. Amen? Change the way you think. Examine how you have been negative, critical of everybody, your husband, your wife, your children, the people in your church. And, you know, re-examine all those areas of your life and tell yourself, no, I want to see God in this situation. I want to see God able, being able to lift me up, to pick me up, and to take me to the next place I want to be. See those things and you will be amazed where God will bring you. The Lord bless you richly. It's been a joy sharing this word with you. And I trust that it has been a, it has ministered to you. If you want to contact me, of course, the, the numbers the numbers are on the screen. The email contact as well. It will be a joy hearing from you. Keep watching Majesty TV. My name is Apostle Larry Dokeno, And I look forward to coming your way again next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.